Dun, 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 dun. How are you doing? I'm good, dude. I'm in Miami all month. Miami? Um, oh, we're live. Yeah, yeah, Miami. Like, uh, I'm doing, because I'm moving out of New York, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to move. So I was like, all right, I'll see Miami. Yep. And in June, I'm in L.A. And then, okay. um, hey, come to L.A. I know it's is like. Is that the spot? Stupid. Here's the thing. Miami smells way less like pee than L.A. does. So I understand why you want to be there. But I'm here. We can play tennis. We can do shit. And Dude, I'm not you can teach me tennis. tennis. Huh? I went. I, I said you can teach me tennis because I like very foolishly, very arrogantly went on a first date one time with a girl who was like super into tennis, and I yeah. was like, "Dude, I played baseball. Like I've hit shit before, right?" And then yeah. like, dude, the first I remember she serves it over to me, dude. That thing just goes over the fence, like, dude. Not the that's same a home fence. run. That's a home no, run. Yeah, literally for her. <laughs> yeah. Dude, bro, man, but, um, it's so different. Like you gotta, you gotta like angle it right. Yeah, and also. It, I, I was I, like against that one dude yesterday I was telling you about who was like way too good. I started using both hands. And I was just like launching that shit. Like it was, it was wild. I'm like dead today. Greatest tennis moment of all time though is John McEnroe and Mr. Deeds. Can you agree? Oh yeah, I think so. Also jumping over you know, the cab. You know what? Actually, I've never looked at. I'm pulling up YouTube right now. Best tennis moments of all time. I'm going to save this for after. Oh, this dude's crying. Uh-uh. A lot of crying. I would say it's probably the most tearful sport. Can you think of, like, what? another sport? No, come on. Be like, like, you think of, like, images of just people, like, bawling. I feel like the like, tennis people, man, like, they really get emotional when they win. But you can't tell if people are crying on swim team. That is true. That's a very good point. Also, <laughs> also <laughs> like, I don't know why this is true. Like. But yeah, these dudes are all crying in these thumbnails. Um, weird. But so I was talking to I was, I was talking to this uh, dude we work with about. I was like, you know, I kind of want to try golf. And he calls me. He's like, he's like real neurotic. It's really funny. But he was like, okay, so listen, we're gonna have to get you some lessons. You're gonna have to do this like a few times a week, and you're gonna have to build up because I've been playing it for years, and blah, blah, blah. It really brings out the darkness in me. And like, you know, I'm just like, yo, I just wanted to drive the cart, chill. But um. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna do tennis instead. And it's worked out really well. Like the cardio is like, I thought I'd be like fine because I've been riding my bike a lot, but yeah. it's a thing. Do you, um, I know you do transcendental meditation. I've heard that golf is like legitimately really like meditative. Like I want to pick up golf. I hear, dude, I feel like golf would just be the best, like clearing your mind and I'm sure it's really frustrating. But what if you're bad but... at it? I feel like it would cloud your mind. Oh, really? Like my guy made it sound hard. He was like, I get so mad. He's like, nothing brings that out of me except at golf. I just get furious. And I'm like, oh, shit. I think that dude should stay away from golf. Um, let's, talk, let's talk business really quick. Of course, the album. Why? Why? Out at midnight. Out at midnight. 9 Yo, p.m. If you Australia the and Asia and Russia, those people all got it right now. UK is about to get it. I'm so ready. I keep typing in like song names and just looking at like what people are saying. Yeah. Is it kind of like a 24 hour party when you drop a record now? Cause that's a great point. Right now it kind of feels like it, like the label just sent me Benny Hanna. And I was like, because right. like getting that delivered so funny to me for some reason, it's like, it's like a dumb flex because like half of it is like watching the show, but I'm like, they were like, Hey, you have a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. Like, uh, we're going to order you lunch. And I was like, okay, cool. And yeah, Benny Hanna just showed up like five minutes ago. And I was just like, and they gave me this like cat thing. I was checking it for hidden cameras right before we got on. Like, Dude, tracking. have you ever seen that? Um, what's that YouTuber's name? Shane Dawson. Have you ever seen his documentary about the hidden cameras? No, I haven't. Dude, I'm not even like a big like YouTuber person, but uh, I was staying in an Airbnb in Tampa for the Super Bowl, and this girl that was staying with me was like, "Oh, you gotta watch this! Like, people are watching us. Like, there's cameras everywhere in Airbnbs." Dude, it was pretty freaky, man. Like, you're I've, smart to check that shit. I've stayed in so many Airbnbs. There is no way. Like before, I had a place out here. I used to just come out here and I'd get one like every time. There's no way a camera hasn't seen me naked, like without me knowing. There, that, the odds of that are so totally. small. I've stayed in like 20 Airbnbs. Like what are oh, the yeah. odds? Because like 
I wasn't that paranoid about it at first. I started checking uh, within like the last like three or four that I stayed in. Cause I was like, you know what? This is weird. This is weird. And I think I heard someone say like, yeah, they can put them like in like phone charger blocks or some shit. And I was like, what? Uh, Dude, so it's I'm insanity. in there with my phone looking in the plugs and like in the TV <laughs> looking for like double-sided mirrors and shit. Just naked. Um, dude, how did you kick social? Like, really? Because I know you were off social for like six months. And I feel like this is it something was, that like. It was easy. Really? It, could, it was easy? I'm going to tell you why, though. Like, you, you're like working on an art project, like Greatest Tits. You know, you're, you're, you're like, you're in art mode. And everything is just so cynical and so much. And there's always just so much bad shit that you like. You start to like kind of fatigue a little bit. And at the same time, like, I also, I think it's bad to just get, have like so many people communicating with you at all times and like so much, like so many opinions, good or bad. It's just like, uh, it's not good for you. And when you're making art, you need to like, like access your like inner child and shit. You need to like be like in there. And it's hard to be vulnerable when you're surrounded by like cynicism and like, negativity and just like even just input in general it doesn't even have to be negative but just like like I I knew it was important for making music and honestly like when I stopped it was hard not to post it first I was like like I'd have a thought and be like I should tweet that I'm like no and and the thing is I didn't even want to make it like a like like a like a whole fucking thing like I wasn't on Instagram like I'll see you guys later. It's just like, I'm done for now. You know what I mean? Um, Cause usually when people announce like a departure from social media, they're back the next week and you're like, okay. Right. No, it's just like, I knew it'd be better for the album and better for me to just not. And then I realized like a couple months in, I was like, I have no desire to do this. Interesting. And by the end, when I, like, we were about to like put low key out, and I was like, "Shit, I have to come back now." I was like, "I don't want to do this. I don't want to post." So, like, why would I invite like insanity back into my like presence? Like, why would I do that? Did you did you find that things that maybe you would have previously tweeted, you actually put into your lyricism? You know, because like with a lot of this record, like we even we haven't even heard at least stateside the seventeen you know records in in its entirety. But even the ones yeah. that we've heard, I mean, like you're really saying some like heavy shit at times, and it's very you know introspective as you'd imagine a pandemic record to be. But did you mm-hmm. find that almost like it made the record more pure and more of I, your thoughts went to that as opposed to like a, a tweet? I think so. I think I've, I haven't thought about it in that way, but yeah, I feel like there has to have been some degree of like. <clears throat> like filtered down like especially like there's there's certain songs from just go and like like it and see you in the future people haven't heard those ones yet but like there's and it's really in all of them but there's like there was like a like by stepping away it's like you almost like move like a filter and like move like like a screen out of the way and you can just kind of like pour into something you know yeah i think it- well it's um I, w- I went off my phone for like two weeks at the end of last year. And I was really Ooh. thinking about how much like, like, you know, like, you know, the, the world has changed so much since we were like, you know, fucking cavemen, but we haven't right. changed that much. And when you think about like the scarcity of information back then, you mm-hmm. would inherently like, you know, and what was it? It was like, don't go over there. There's like a bear that's going to eat you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, go over there. There's food. And By those the way, are the only, what? That's great info. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, that's what I'm saying, dude. You know what I mean? Don't it's go like, there. There's a bear. <laughs> Literally. And like, if you think about it, like, yo, that is great info and it's vital. And so our brains, yep. like when we get information, we're like, mm-hmm. this is important, but now we're yep. given such BS information. Like it's so inconsequential. You know what I mean? Yep. Like just people's musings and thoughts, you really don't need, mm-hmm. like, you don't need it every day. You know what I mean? You went no. six months and you were fine. It was so nice. It was amazing. It's good stuff. If anyone um, can do it, I recommend it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you also think about like, the, like, like historically musicians, like you would do promo around your mm-hmm. album, but like, you wouldn't be doing promo every day, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like you need time yeah, to, I, to kind of be an artist. Um, 
I yeah. wanted to ask you about something in the V-Man article that I thought was really cool um, and interesting, especially within like the, the, you know, the genre of alternative pop punk is uh, the sentiment that uh, nostalgia is poison mm -hmm. for art. You want to expand on that? Sure. I agree, um, but go on. I think that nostalgia is like a crutch for people. And I think it's almost like putting yourself down in a way um, because if like, okay, there are many talented people that like made great shit when they were like 17 or whatever. And then they, they put those songs on a pedestal so much. And I feel like it's out of maybe fear, maybe not, maybe it's not, but when they like put those songs on a pedestal, it's almost like not giving yourself room to grow. And it's like, you're, you're like shutting, you're like, almost kind of smothering new work. And it just feels like such a disservice to yourself artistically, you know what I mean? And I think that like, I don't know, giving yourself the fallback of, we'll just do a 10 year tour is like, like, sure it works. Like, you know, get your paper and shit. But like, as far as art goes, everybody that I love moves forward. And everybody that I like, like, like emulate and like respect and all, like, like when you go see, you know, certain, like when you see artists that you can tell are still evolving, they're playing those songs on that tour. And if you missed it, it's like a, you had to be there kind of thing. Yeah. And that kind of scarcity, like makes what you're doing so valuable. Cause dude, okay, here's the thing. We did the fandom tour. We got to do it in the US and the UK and Europe. And it's like, there are gonna be people that wished I mean, I'm sure there are people now that like wish they could have gone to that, like that found us during the pandemic and like, you know, whatever. There, it's going to be the same way with this album. And it's like, I think it's important to live your current like expression as much as you can while you're still in it and while you still feel it. And so it's like, I know five years from now, there are going to be people that are like, fuck, I should have gone to the like greatest hits tour. You know what I mean? Some kind of shit. Like they played the whole fucking, like, imagine getting to see, like, Magnetic and like it and blah, 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 and, like, that intro and, like, oh, my fucking God. You know what I mean? Like, like that's going to be a thing. And I think all good artists, like, like, travel with their music. You know what I mean? Like, as far as shows go and as far as, like, how they operate. And I think if you linger on the past, it just stunts, like, growth because, I mean if we just focused on double dare and it was like stupid for you is ending every set we're putting out a deluxe whatever 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 like i don't know like it would just be like such a ceiling for yourself and it's just like i don't know uh, that would just bum me but I, i'd quit honestly. no um well drake has a great sort of like a self-competition with himself through the lens yeah. of what you're talking about with with touring where he like every tour he needs a new closer right and mm. like, so when he's riding, he's like trying yeah. to find that next closer for the tour. And yeah. I think that's a great metric or a bar to shoot for. And it's kind yeah. of the same thing you're talking about because, um, mm -hmm. and it is, it's like uniquely pop punk. It's uniquely alternative. And I hear so much new music today um, mm. and in that genre, in that format. And I'm like, yeah, this is cool, but this is sort of like a Xerox of like this thing. You right. Know? As opposed to like- Classics. What's that? I said, if you're just going in and you're- like paying tribute essentially right you're never gonna beat those classic songs no you can't you it's can't a, it's an echo <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and what the I mean? echo or be like louder than the original thing you know what i mean like so i'm just way more interested like it's it's cool that people are like paying tribute and doing all that stuff like no shade or anything i'm it's yeah. just i'm interested in moving forward and pushing alternative forward well, and you guys do, and this isn't even me like blowing smoke on Twitch because you're here, but you listen to the, even the records that are out right now off of Greatest Hits, it, it, this would sound like it was from some other galaxy in, in 2006. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, which is, dude, that's 15 years. It's a long ass time. That's mm -hmm. how music should sound compared to 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Right. And um, it's cool. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully it opens more doors and ears for, for water parks and then also just like uh, maybe other people follow suit. Um, because I think it needs it right now. You know what yeah. I mean? And again, there's, there's cool music, but it's cool because it's derivative of cooler music. 
that but it's sense. good though, because alternative like as far as like mass like culture shift like sub whatever things for like music and everything it's on like alternative is on the upswing now totally and that's what it is so i mean even if it like isn't innovative right now or like particularly all amazing or like up my alley or whatever it's like i can still recognize that it's a it's a dope thing you know because dude i'm i'm not no, i'm not on. interested in sorry i'm not as interested in like a pop punk revival as i am like like an alternative upswing mm -hmm. you know what like alternative music becoming the focal point that's what's more important to me and i think the pop punk thing like helps it but i don't think that's where it's like landing and ending yeah i think it's probably like historically if you watch like moments or trends or or you know mm -hmm. cultures or those upswings you're talking about there's like the thing and then there's the thing before the thing and mm -hmm. i think the thing before the thing is pop punk you know i think like yeah. we're heading into this uh, era where we're going to really value like visceral experiences because we've all been yeah. inside for so long and authenticness yeah. and 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 i think that's why like tiktok has exploded and instagram mm -hmm. is kind of like dying right now because it's just like you really want the anxiety of like looking perfect and that's so much of what ig culture was and i mm -hmm. think that that sort of like rawness that speaks to you guys that speaks to alternative you know culture mm -hmm. so yeah. fingers crossed we get it um all right i want to get to some fan questions here because uh they're blowing up the chat of course per usual uh farron like the woods says awesome what is your favorite song today and let's I go let's go a non-water park song because you, that's you've been... great that's hard non-water parks are you kidding me it's the best thing today are you listening to music are you like other music while you make music or you, do you need to shut it off um um here's the thing i mean i can listen to some things i can't listen to bands i just don't want to okay. risk any lead over you know what i mean i need to be right. listening to completely outside of this because no matter what, like, let's say I listened to Blink every day for a year, every single day, no matter like how much I like bought it or whatever, that would be like in our stuff. And you know what I mean? Like I already naturally like grew up with that. So there's already going to be like elements of like early 2000s, like music, but yeah. it needs to be such a present and consistent thing. You know what I mean? Um, I've been listening to a bunch of positive affirmations. I got, I got this guy right here. Check it. I am like that source of motivation. Like that kind of thing. I get that going. Okay. I blast some affirmations. Um, um, have you seen the movie? Do you remember the movie Grind? Oh yeah, dude. Yo, you that know what's funny? Goes hard. That soundtrack's amazing, and um, my friends always hyped it up. But I don't even remember if it was like in theaters or not. I forget if it was like straight to TV. But I watched it recently, dude. Me that too. Doesn't hold up, dude. Did, did, it, did you, it just didn't hold up for me, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Here's the thing. A lot of other movies from that time held up way less, though. Oh, dude. Like uh, we were just talking about this on the on the air. Uh, I recently rewatched Euro Trip. And when Did I was you? like, I was going to do well, that because I saw it on Hulu. Dude, so I snuck into that. I said I was going to go see like Troy or some movie at the time. And then yeah. I snuck in like the old R rated move. And it yeah. was such an epic night. And like, you know, that movie's crazy yeah. like a 12 year old. And then right. I rewatched, I was like, other than the Matt Damon cameo, I was like, yo, this yeah. movie's kind of trash, dude. But what, hold, what holds up? Give me a movie you think holds up. Mm. Uh, okay. Grind held up more than others. I watched, because I watched some like Austin Powers on because it was on the bus last time like we were out. That one wasn't like as recent, but it was on the last tour that we did. Uh, and I was like, ooh, shit. Um, Nutty Professor did not hold up. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what did hold up was Big Mama's House. Really? Yes. Like I used okay. to watch that movie all the time and maybe it was just the nostalgia for me or whatever, but that one still held up. I, like, I, I enjoyed watching it. Um, Shout out Martin Lawrence, man. But anyway, Grind soundtrack. I downloaded that the other day. I downloaded right. uh, the Medal of Honor soundtrack and the Spyro the Dragon soundtrack. 
Dude, there was some. Um, there was. Some, we just had Taking Back Sunday on uh, on Thursdays. We usually do like mm. anniversary shows, like like kind of throwback shows. And we yeah. had Taking Back Sunday on. We were talking about how many uh, soundtracks they were on, how huge they were back in the day. But yeah. uh, dude, a sleeper man. I mean, some harder mm. stuff, not so much pop punk, but definitely alternative. Yeah, the Daredevil soundtrack. Whoa, interesting. Me, yeah, you go back, up. and there's like some B sides from like you know big acts you probably listen to that you're like, oh, I didn't. Yo, really Spider Man was like that too. Dude, Spider-Man 2 soundtrack's, like, out of control. Like, they had not uh, go that hard. Yo, they had um, the Sum41 one on there, the, uh, what we're all about is all we live for. Oh, uh, dude, they, he I, hates that song. He was just on the show, and he, he's like, I fucking hate that song. But, like, he needs Rick to relax. Produces. That song is dope. <laughs> nah. uh Oh, um, yeah, dude, the Daredevil soundtrack is all, like, it's the genres are post-grunge and new metal. I bet it goes go. hard. Actually, Nickelback is on here and on the Spider-Man one. Also, I remember loving that Nickelback song on there, on that soundtrack. It's like, dude, we love and I know why did all fly away or some shit. <laughs> also, yo, straight yes. up, yeah, Cheaper by the Dozen changed the game, dude. That soundtrack. Oh, really? Some 41 Simple Plan, like Hillary Duff, hold up. It was... Uh, I like literally sometimes I hear stuff when I'm talking to Otto, like he understands what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, this is like fucking cheaper by the dozen core. Oh, how did Otto feel about you or uh, looking forward to him being a murderer in 15 years? I watched that interview. Oh, yeah. He doesn't watch our interviews, so he doesn't know anything. Okay. <laughs> he's actually planning. Dude. He's going to he, he crashes on this couch when he's out here. That's awesome. Are this you guys all in different couch. places? Huh? Are you guys all in different places? So, um, Jeff has a house in Ohio, um, and Otto has a place in Houston, and I'm in Los Angeles. Okay, right on. Yeah. So, Did pandemic you- tough for that, but now that everybody's getting vaxxed and all this shit, right. yep, Jackson 5, Hillary Duff, um, Sum 41, Fountains of Wayne, yep. uh, Simple plan. Uh, fucking life is a highway is on every soundtrack, but it still makes it better. Um, you, know just, what, you know what else is like uh, to your brother that's in court? Freaky Friday soundtrack. Ooh, hey, I remember when I was younger and I was watching that movie, I had just started playing guitar, maybe like, maybe, um, maybe two years or just short. And um, I remember rewinding the DVD over and over and over so I could learn the guitar solo that they played at the House of Blues at the end. Yeah. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. Well, yeah, the Battle of the Bands? Yeah, of course. At the end of uh, Free yeah, Friday. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I just uh, remembered something because when you think about those classic movies, I'm like such yeah. a sucker for movies that, I don't know why, but something about movies that take place like in a single day or a single night, like Can't Hardly Wait or like Days of Confused. And isn't that sort of mm-hmm. like the concept of this album? Like, it happens within a night. Yeah, that's what I so, wanted. It. Mm. No, no, no. Explain that. Oh, oh yeah. So <clears throat> I don't want to give too many spoilers for because I saw people freaking out about getting spoilers on Twitter for the album. But um, in the first track, you can definitely like it's it, that's like the like the end of fandom and kind of like you know going home afterwards and and like kind of going to sleep you know what I mean like that night is like 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 time it's kind of like slowing down and then with the lyrics of the next song that's like when everything begins and it's so tricky I'm trying not to give away too much but so yeah if you hate spoilers cover your ears and like move it around so you can't hear anything I'm gonna give you three seconds one Mississippi two Mississippi three all right so um and then ice bath is like a like the the wake up point and see you in the future the last track is like like being awake again and it's just like fucking hell on earth kind of like like the maybe the craziest track on the album like everything's just so much more chaotic it's it's a lot um i wanted to ask you about the violet song yeah. I mean, how, how, I mean, beautiful song. How Thanks. serious was that situation? How crazy was that? Was or is? Oh, is it still? 
Well, because it's, it's, it's I'm fascinated you wrote about it because I feel like that's what they want. Because I've had my, you know, I, I I pale in comparison to the fandom of Austin Knight, of course. But <laughs> I've I've had so, I've had some like I've had some people just take it like because it's a very like you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Like you mm. you when when you're in this industry, you want to develop an audience, you want to develop a public, and you want anybody to care about what you're doing. And then yeah. eventually you have that. And then that's amazing. But then there's this next stage you enter into where some of those mm. people, there's like this intangible line that you don't mm. know what it is. But I remember like this one, this one person was like finding things out about me that were like not said in interviews. They yeah. mailed me underwear one time when I didn't ask for underwear. <laughs> and it was like, I was kind of like, you know what? Like this has gone too far. But right. with, uh, with your situation, like, I mean, if you don't want to get into it, I, I totally respect that. But how did you know I mean, it went too far? Yeah, like, just um, the, like, stuff that's, hmm. yeah, because, again, I don't want to, like, antagonize anyone. Yeah. Um, but it was more so extra strange with the in-person encounters. Okay. Um, but yeah yeah it's it's a I'll, I'll just say it's a real situation and uh but i'm not worried about it i wear rings so at all times <laughs> ring being strong what made yep. you want to write about it like did you have we had a fan question here um mm. from uh a day 44 uh, were there any songs you were hesitant on putting on the album were you hesitant putting that song in the album in in some way shape or form like validating those transgressions Honestly, not really, because like when, okay, putting it on the album, maybe, but when I'm writing, like I write so much that like, honestly, I'm just really not thinking of, like, I can't think about like, oh, but how is that one going to be perceived? Or how is that going to like, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't think about the effects until I'm just like, fuck it, because I mean, whatever. Um, like the thing is, if I wrote and was like thinking about how it's what's going to happen or like all the things or whatever, that would just block the process so much. And it just needs to be like a cathartic outpour. You know what I mean? And so, right. but as far as putting it on the album goes, it was just so good. And I just love the chords and it just felt like Sometimes when you make a song, you just know it has to be on the album. And that's what all of them were. Cause I think I meant, or I don't know, I think I mentioned it before. There's over a hundred demos for this album. And cause I mean, we had fucking time. And so everything that's on it is just like, oh, that has to be there or it can't come out. Right. How so, much do you and Zach collab on that in terms of like the final 17? Oh, um, you know, I do send him demos and get his opinions, but um, I kind of, you know, I think as far as like concepts and everything go and like choosing songs in that way, like Zach is more like, like I'll choose the songs and then we go in and you know, what I'll do is I'll print each stem and like each, each track that is recorded like separately. And then we just go in and try and beat each one. And then we compare afterwards. We're like, okay, what's better the demo or this new one? demo or studio demo studio and like it just it kept being like a mix of both you know what i mean so interesting yeah but um as far as like choosing what goes on the album you know especially like when relating to like full concepts and everything i really like to talk to my friend travis who i do the podcast with because he's an author and he reads all day every day and is so like story and detail focused and just all like he's just so about that that like whenever I explain like hey this is the story of this album it kind of like helps to have his perspective and then obviously Jeff and Otto like we, we all talk and um kind of like like Otto came over and we chose that's how we like chose the track list um because like I was like dude you know my brain is just like so like clogged right now like because it's hard, like when you're so in it, it's hard to see the bigger picture. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, right yeah. up. Uh, and, and so, yeah, like auto came out. It was also like, we recorded a bunch of drums in that time, shot some videos. It was good. But, um, 
we sat, we each had like boards and I printed up all the song titles and we're like moving, like moving our own stuff around. And we're like, okay, then the way these ones fit here, like it was like the, like a way we like chose the final track list. And that's actually what's on the back of the album art was like those little slips of paper are like from when Otto, like I took a picture of it. And then that's like when Otto and I like chose the final list. That's amazing. Um, some quick hitting fan questions before we go. Um, yeah. Kind of building off of the 100 demos that you guys uh, made for the record. Uh, eight. What's that? 108. 108. How dare I? Uh, <laughs> Mela Meme Streams. Hey, Austin, will there be a Greatest Hits Part 2 or maybe a deluxe version, something like that? You know, I've thought about it, but not in a way of like, let's throw some B-slides on it. Because like, no, fuck that. Um, if a song is meant to be on an album, it should just be on the album there totally you know what i mean totally. but that's not to say that we don't have like like these instrumentals are just so fucking cool and i think like as much as i love all the lyrics and the sound of my own voice because i'm a fucking annoying singer um the instrumentals are so good and i would love to like have a way to highlight those so i think it'd be cool to put those on like an extended version or like get a bunch of remixes because, dude, I love remixes. When I hear a good remix, I'm like, oh, my God, why didn't we just do the song like that? Like, and so I would make it I would make an extended version with like alt versions, remixes, instrumentals and just like send yeah. that out. But I don't think I would do like a B side type thing because there's no such thing as a B side on greatest hits. <laughs> right. Um, all right. This comes from Julia underscore Castillo. When are you releasing North American tour dates? We know you have them, but is there, can you put a timeline out there? That flyer is so good. I made it the other day. And I honestly, I had Photoshop open for like a week, fucking around, trying to make it cooler. I was just like, something's not right. And I kept changing the images and like adding different things in there, changing fonts. Dude. The way I made the tour font name, it was crazy. I ran it through so many things. I like did all these different weird stretches and like like gradient things. And I was like taking pictures of the screen and then bringing that separately back in. And like, just, it, it looks fucking nuts. I love this flyer. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, anyway, when are we going to get the dates? Um, you know what? I'll tell you a fucking date. Why not? I'm not scared. Who did I send this flyer to? Um, and it's a where's the group chat? I'm gonna tell y'all a date because it's a good day. Uh, or you know what? I probably shouldn't do that. I'll tell you some cities though. Dang, if I found this flyer sooner, you guys would have like more information. Um, dude, where is the group? I know I'm just dude, my, so my message does this really cool thing for me where it doesn't save contacts. And so everything is just like phone numbers. That's why this is hard. Um, oh, and I texted this other thing to the group. It has to be like, right. Talking about security. No. <laughs> um, Oh, wait, I texted it to this group. Here we go. Um, you know what? Maybe ask me another question while I find this. That way, this isn't just silence like dead air. What's, uh, how about um, Europe? A lot of people ask about Europe. See you in the future tour got rescheduled to next year, but we're about to go back for Slam Dunk Fest and like uh, some smaller, like, uh, album release shows and uh i think as far as the shows go like the actual shows outside of slam dunk stuff all of them are sold out except for one and i think it definitely has like less than 50 tickets so uh i forgot what city that is um you guys go find the flyer go find it <laughs> um I, and then I, under I, don't know I barely know anything under underscore Emily wants to know what merch will we be getting tomorrow. What's today? The twentieth, Thursday. Thursday. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um. 
um wait am i allowed to say brands on here or like other companies yeah. or whatever uh, yeah okay okay um so on monday i think i think monday I'm finally almost done designing all the album release show merch. So that's going to be a whole thing. We're going to launch it with some other new stuff for the album release show with the will turn, which is dope Friday, Amazon and uh, Amazon, the Amazon store is putting up like a whole bunch of shit. Oh, that's awesome. Dude, that so thing you did with like network first. was tight. That, what? Like, cause the thing you did with network was super tight. Like I thought that was such a cool oh, concept. I've never seen a band do that. It was, what was it, an exclusive drop? Like only yeah. at that point. Mm -hmm. I That's love awesome. doing that. That's what we did with the uh, the first anti anti tour merch, where it was like those white ones. I was like, okay, well, here's this. It's limited. It's on this website. It's coming nowhere near you. dot com. When it's out, it's out. And it was done so quick. Like everything was gone. Like I think in it was. I think it was around three hours or less than three hours or something. Everything was gone. And I was just like, I was like, all right. It's done. And people are like, wait, where is it? I'm like, you missed it. That's the point. I told you be ready. You weren't That's ready. so cool though. Oh, um, dude, we're super lucky. Parties are nuts, dude. I can attest. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, as we, any update on the, uh, the tour group chat. Right. Let me hang on. Hang on. What is this? Um, wait, if I leave this window, cause I can definitely find it on my phone in like one second. If, if I leave this, will it close out? Producer Ian, do you know? Ian! <laughs> wait, 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 hang on though, hang on. If I if I close out and then come back, will, it, will you stay on and like, it'll be fine? Yeah, yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, hang on. Okay. Da -da. We need, Ian, we need uh, elevator music. I guess cleared elevator music. Shout out to everybody in the chat, actually, right now. Are we still on the air, Ian? All right, amazing. So shout out to uh, Violet Perfume. I already talked about underscore Emily. We got Carly Ta. Okay, okay. Back. I'm going to give you some cities. Here we go. Nashville. We haven't been to Nashville in... I don't know if we've ever played Nashville, like, besides, like, Warped Tour. I don't think we've done, like, an actual show. Nashville is getting a show. Austin, Texas is getting a show. By the way, they haven't gotten a show from us since like 2016, besides like festival wow. shit. Austin and Nashville. You know, I'm gonna give you two more. Houston, cause hometown, we've got to fucking roll through. And Los Angeles, second hometown. Let's fucking go! Someone's gonna You're be right here. For you heard it here first, folks. All right, Austin, I'm going to leave with this, dude. It's yes. a big chart battle this week. Triple threat cage match. You, 21 Pilots, Olivia Rodrigo. Do we want to do, you want to do any pro wrestling trash talk? Do you want to send a message out? No, I don't. I think – here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think everyone can win. I don't want to fight Olivia Rodrigo. Her music is so good. I don't want to fight 21 Pilots. Like, Blurry Face is, like, that's in my top 10. I don't want to fight anybody. Huge album. I just want to put out my favorite fucking album we've ever made. I want to put out my baby. I want to say, everyone, look at this. I'm putting out positivity. I'm not fighting anymore. I'm done. I'm not as worried about charts because, obviously, you know, crazy shit. Blake Shelton, he's going to outsell all of us. Dude, Fuck it, his fucking like, lowest selling album is bigger than like pop people. It's insane. Country motherfuckers buy dude. music. Like, dude. And um, continue to. Dude, there's, like, there's like country to. albums on the top 10 that I'm like, that came out a year ago. Dude, that motherfucker sold 135,000 first week on his last album. It's not, it's like no one does rap. that. Dude, no. no one does that except for like Taylor Swift and like Drake and shit. I'm like, Blake Shelton? It's crazy. That's going to be you guys after the Nashville show, though. Big true. We're going to be like, come through. It's music. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody stream Austin's baby. Okay. The baby's about to be born. We want some good memories of the baby. So there you go. Awesome, yes. dude. Always a pleasure, man. We'll talk again pretty soon. Please. Amazing. Later.